G'day everyone, Dicko here with another kick-ass walkthrough. Today we're going to talk about UDIMs, what they are, how to use them in Blender. UDIMs are a pretty recent addition to Blender, even though they've been around in the industry for some time. And this is certainly a more intermediate to advanced feature in Blender, and it's something you don't need to use in every circumstance, nor should it be. However, since I've been making this film of mine, I've been finding the need to use more detailed textures and UDIMS provides me that opportunity to utilize as much detail as possible in my models. Utilizing UDIMS also gives the added advantage of reducing the amount of materials I need for any particular model. And we'll get into that now as we explain what UDIMS are. So UDIMS are basically a automatic UV offset system that can assign an image to a specific UV tile. That means instead of having to cram in as much image information into a single UV tile, you can spread out your UVs over multiple UV tiles and then create images for those specific sections. Blender will then treat those images as basically one giant image as a texture node, which you can then link up to a material. So jumping into the model, as you can see, I've got a basic checker texture applied to this model and a fairly straightforward UV unwrap. And as you can see, the amount of space that the face, for instance, takes up on that texture map is really, really small. If you were to texture this model right now, you would find that it would be an absolute nightmare to get the right kind of detail out of it. So basically, in an ideal situation, I would want that face to take up the entire texture map. Looking at the texture on the face, you can see that now the grid is smaller, representing the amount of pixels it can take on for that section. But we have a problem. We have overlapping UVs at this point, so if we wanted to export it out of Substance Painter, for instance, and bake out the mesh for UV painting, then we have a problem. The solution then is to give that face UV its own texture map. And this can be achieved in Blender using the UV editor. Basically, we have to create a new texture so that Blender understands that we're going to be using UDIMS. So we push new and it will get a pop-up. Basically, we just make any old UV tile. You can name it whatever you want, we're not going to use it anyway. Since I'm planning on painting this character in Substance Painter, doing this more or less triggers the ability for the mesh to be recognized as having UDIM tiles. So really, you can name it whatever you want. Um, the big important thing is actually the option to select tiled and by selecting tiled you're effectively creating the UDIM map for Blender to recognize this mesh as having them. So as you can see nothing looks like it happened but if you look on the end panel on the right side there's this option to add new UDIM tiles. So to do that you press add tile on the bottom panel and you'll get a pop-up. You can select how many tiles you want in this case, I'm going to select five. I push OK. And as you can see, I have the option to have multiple UDIM tiles on that one mesh. And now it's just a matter of just moving the different UV elements or the UV elements to their appropriate UDIM tile. In this case, it's completely up to you what kind of detail you want on your model. You can fall into the trap of putting in too much detail or having too many UDIM tiles for a given object or a given model. So you got to plan ahead and understand how much detail you really want this model to have. You're probably seeing me repeat the process here, but that's only because I wanted to have some transparency in the background so I can visualize my UVs clearer, but that's completely optional. And you can see that each UV tile has been coded with a specific number, starting from 1001 and onwards. Um, and this becomes really important as you get into import and export of your model into say substance or whatever, and it's also really important when it comes to the import and export of your textures because Blender will use this file code, as in the 001, 002, etc., to determine which image corresponds to the right UDIM tile. So the great thing about this is that you can actually separate different parts of the body of the same mesh and generate more resolution for particular parts, such as the fingers of the hands if you want to add fingernails and wrinkles and all sort of stuff to that particular part of the body. So as you can see here, I'm scaling up the hands to be on its own UDIM tile. And as I said before, there's no hard and fast rule how you organize your tiles. So it's up to you where you want to put um, the different UV islands for the part of your body or model. And 
it's up to you what kind of resolution you want to give those different parts of the body or model. So for example, if you were to model a character and you don't expect to see much of the skin of this body underneath all these clothes that you might be adding to it, then you might not care about adding extra resolution to the body. You might want to keep the back, the chest, legs and arms all on its own UV tile, have a tile just for the face, and then maybe something for the hands if you plan on having a close-up shot. It's also worth noting that if you have a character that's fully clothed, you got everything sorted out and the model's finished, and you plan on exporting this to, say, Substance Painter, you need to make sure that the clothes have their UV islands on their own Udem tile. So, for instance, if you've already done the unwrap on the figure, so the skin, then perhaps uh, tile 001 to 005 have already been used up. So unless you plan on painting the clothes and the body in separate Substance Painter files, for instance, then Substance won't be able to discern whether or not the clothes or the body are meant to exist on that particular tile. Because the way that Substance Painter handles Udem tiles, it basically interprets them as separate materials. So basically, make sure you map everything out along each of their tiles and you'll see how that looks in the end once um, I line everything up. The reason I bring this up is because I myself had trouble understanding this because normally Substance Painter treats material IDs basically as what you paint on. So suddenly all the materials you assign to your model mean nothing according to Substance Painter because the model happens to have UDIMs. So that's something to be aware of basically. So you can see the final result here. I've mapped out the clothing, the body, the hair, and each component has their own UDIM tile essentially. So starting with the face, there's some hands. Uh, you can see the top of the hair there, the clothing on the end there. So they all have their own UDIM tile because again, Substance will interpret these as their own material ID. And as you can see, I'm ignoring the fact that the clothes and the hair have their own material because once I've come back from painting the um, the character, um, they're no longer relevant. And here's a quick little example of me working through Substance as I um, texture up this character. And as you can see on the side there, all the uh, Udem tiles have been in have been interpreted as material IDs. So basically, I just paint um, my textures based on those IDs, and then when I come to the point where I want to export these files, it will automatically generate the right file extensions and the right file names with the right code. So 1001, 02, 03, etc. And then when I bring it back into Blender, Blender will interpret those different texture files to the correct UDEM tile. The cool thing about this method is that um, each UDEM tile doesn't have to be exported with the same pixel resolution. So for instance, if I want to have even more resolution on the face, I can export a 4K resolution texture from the face and then say on a different UDEM tile, say the body where I don't need that kind of resolution, I can reduce it um, to say 1024 or 2048. Um, yeah, it doesn't really matter. And the cool thing is that Blender doesn't care about those texture resolutions. It just links them all together as long as it has the right UDEM tile code. Now before I move on, you might be wondering why I'm talking about Substance Painter in a Blender tutorial. Well, the reason being is that while you can paint your textures with UDEMs in Blender, um, let's face it, Substance Painter just has cool materials and it's fun to paint in. Whereas Blender, while it may be powerful, it's a lot longer process. So I'm willing to pay the money to save some time. Now, as you can see, I'm jumping into my material settings now and I'm about to link up my um, my textures. I'm going to be using the Node Wrangler add-on. So just turn that on if you haven't got it turned on because it's a bloody lifesaver. So you'll see it here, Node Wrangler. So make sure that's turned on. All right, with that out of the way, I select my material, then push Control Shift T. I navigate to my texture exports and I select my passes, so my diffuse, my roughness, metallics, all that sort of stuff. 
and Blender will automatically, or Node Wrangler will automatically link those up to the appropriate node inputs. And as you can see, it loads it in. It's loading in an Eevee. And as you can see, it's linked up some textures. But you'll see there's a problem. Um, Node Wrangler hasn't yet been updated to recognize tiled UDIM textures. So we need to do that manually. So first on each node, image texture node, I switch it to tiled. And it's a little bit of a process there. Once that's all done, you'll see that all those texture inputs suddenly turn pink. And that's because the node hasn't been, the texture node hasn't been recognized to have UDIM tiles. So to fix that, we navigate to our texture in the UV or image editor, and then we add back those tiles. So we just put 10 or 15, push OK. And still it hasn't been recognized, but you just have to refresh the inputs and suddenly, if you look at the UV tiles, they're all there. And all the textures are in the same spot they need to be. Perfect. No fuss. But as you can see, it hasn't linked up every texture. So I have to go through my passes, so my roughness, my normals, all those sort of things, and do the same process. And just refresh those nodes so it recognizes those UDIM tile inputs. And as you can see, it's just working through it. You'll see in the in the um, render preview that suddenly things start to look a bit better on their legs and arms. And yeah, it may be a bit more arduous to go through this process, but it's still a fuckload easier than having to create new materials for every part of the body, link up the textures manually, all that sort of stuff. This is much more easier to deal with. And the interesting thing is, once we've uh, gone through all the tiles, you may recall that I've laid out all my UDIMs, including the clothing, across all these UDIM tiles. So that means technically, because Blender's interpreting every single tile and every texture, I only need one material to get this entire model up and running. So instead of having a separate material for the, um, the clothing and the hair, suddenly I can just copy the material from the body and utilize that material for the rest of my model. So suddenly instead of using three materials, I'm only using one. And there we go. Perfect. That's basically done. The model is finished. And now I can just play with the material settings of that one material to get it looking the way I want it to look. And of course, if I wanted to have a different kind of material property for the clothing, I can just duplicate that material and change some parameters and suddenly I have a second material, but all the textures are still linked up and good to go. So by utilizing UDIMS, you can save a shitload of time in both material setup and texturing just by setting up your model and unwrapping it properly and doing a little bit of planning. Um, I definitely recommend giving it a go, though I will say that if you're a relative noob at 3D, don't jump too far into this because you just need to get to understand the texturing process before you add this layer of complexity. Um, yeah, because a lot of noobs have a lot of anticipation and expectation that everything has to be 4K resolution, absolute ridiculous detail when they barely have a computer to run it. So just be careful when you use these UDIM things as well. All right, that's all there is for today. I hope you found this uh, useful or informative. But with that in mind, uh, I'll catch us later.